So in this section, we'll be modifying this power strip. What we want to do basically is just make the cord shorter. And so we're going to take the screws out of the back, unsolder the lines, cut the line, uh, cut the input cable coming in, and soldering it back down. <coughs> Pretty much, you can do this an alternate way where you don't change the line and you just let this hang out of the, the box on the outside. That way you don't have to compromise the integrity of this switch because this has uh, surge protection built into it and if you do it wrong you can compromise that surge protection. So I'm going to go over how to modify this but keep in mind you don't have to. It's just for convenience and to make the box look tighter. Okay so here we got this extension cord. itself is pretty long so we're going to modify it and turn it into a short cord like this one. We'll open up the back of it and this is extremely dangerous so if it's done wrong it can produce some uh, pretty dangerous results. You want to make sure that you do this correctly and if you're not prepared to reroute something like this then you can just take the alternate route of hanging the cord out of the box. Uh, it just needs to be warned that this has to be done correctly and this is a pro modification. So this base plate right here actually actually <coughs> is set in place. We'll have to take our Dremel tool hack around it in order to get this uh, to release and in the end it will look like this where we've chopped around it in order to get the switch to fall down in there so we can take this circuit out. And so the thing you want to remember here is that this line right here matches your reset and the one with no line is your off. And so reset is always left when you're looking at it right here. Just remember that in general because when you come back, the, it'll no longer be labeled. So you want to make sure that these lines are going to go back into their same places and this has to be fairly tight. These links have to be matching in order for it to go back into the case. And so you want to make sure that the lines go in the right place too. That's very important. If hooked up incorrectly it could be dangerous. So you take a picture of it or follow the picture in the documentation so you can always return it back to how it was made. Okay, so now we have it taken apart and our iron is hot, so what we're going to do is pull on these lines that we're pulling out in a vertical direction away from the board with our fingers right here as we hit it with some heat on the back and that will release that line. We want to maintain these respective links and cords when we cut the line so that they can go back into place and fit fairly comfortably. So right here, we have the circuit board liberated from the cord itself. I'm going to mark the links of the cables on a piece of paper. up these two 
cables. Make sure you get these links correct or give yourself a little bit of extra space on whatever you're doing because <clears throat> it's not always exact and you want it to fit really snug inside of the box. You'll always be able to tell how they are supposed to be aligned. So here, We've got the black and the white cut to the first line. <clears throat> we've got the cord striped right here. That's where the collar's going to go on. And then we're going to strip these ends right here so that they solder back into the... Alright, so we've cut them to their length. Them up so that they fit through the board well. I'm gonna make that one a little bit longer. Right. Make sure they're all twisted. Right. So we're gonna go back to our diagram of how it was wired. Make sure that it gets back onto this board correctly. So we got green going over here. You can tell on the bottom of the board it also has a G. So you're just going to fit that through the hole. And then you're going to hit it with some solder on this other side. off is the rosin and that's what helps it bind. You probably need to add a lot and don't hold it on there too long because it'll burn the cables. Alright, so there we got our green wire in place. So According to our picture now, When you're done, you want to look on the top of the board and make sure that there's uh, not much, if any, wire exposed on top of the board that's not covered in plastic. You'll want this uh, plastic shielding to go all the way down to the board. That's what creates the, the safest connections. They, uh, so on the bottom, they're going to be sticking up like this. You want to take your wire cutters and kind of give them a haircut. Crunched up like this. So let's see. I'm gonna fit these back into here, and it's gotta go around all of these other little pieces, so you may have to work with it for a second. These things have to go back in their place too. So let's go in there. These long lines fit down in here. Switch still works.
pads fit down in there and then you're going to be able to put your collar back on. collar back. tighten the collar and when you're pushing on it make sure that this button doesn't get pushed in and the board pop back out so it needs to be down and set into place you're going to secure the collar at that point you're pretty much good to go short cord and this is going to plug into the GFI unit that we'll build here in a second so that's the finished product this is what we're going for not bad